Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Bajaj Consumer Care Limited Q1 FY25 results conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be no opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Bhavania from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, good evening, good evening everyone. Uh, it's our pleasure at ICICI to host Q1 FY25 Results Conference call for the Judge Consumer Care. From the management we have today, Mr. J.D. Chandi, Managing Director, Mr. Dilip Kumar Malu, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Richard Bisuza, AAP Finance. I'll now end with the call to Jadeep, sir, for his opening remarks and post his opening remarks for the Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Karan. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for participating in this Q1 FY25 earnings call. So let me take you through the performance of the company for the quarter ended 30th June 2024 before we open the house of uh, questions. <clears throat> In the first quarter of the current financial year, uh, standalone sales for the company stood at 236.9 crores. And on a sequential basis, the value growth was 3% and volume growth was 2.7%. While on a year on year basis, the value and volume saw a decline of 8.8 and 6.7% respectively. Due to high base of Q1 last year, as well as a one time market hygiene correction that we had taken up in wholesale, which I'll explain later. The top line uh, for four-year CAGR for Q1 is 5.5%, while the three-year CAGR is 4%. The gross margin for Q1 FI25 on a standalone basis stood at 65.2%, uh, an expansion of more than 60 basis points, both on a sequential as well as on a year-on-year -year basis. The quarter one FI25 EBITDA stood at 38.4 crores, with EBITDA margin at 16.2% of sales, while the PAT stood at 38 crores. A bad margin was 16% of sales for the current quarter. In Q1 of the current fiscal, we implement a planned one-time correction in wholesale channel in general trade. The discounts were rationalized to reduce over-dependence on top and uh, top end wholesalers during the quarter. This resulted in reduced buying from the top end of the wholesalers, thereby depleting their stock holding in the quarter. Since while there was a temporary sales impact, the hygiene in the market has drastically improved and stabilized raised in, uh, raised in wholesale across the country. This correction has also led to broad basing of our wholesalers by more than 800 numbers, which uh, translates to about 13% of the wholesale base. As a, as a result, we expect the wholesale channel to perform well going forward now that the hygiene has got corrected. Uh, overall, if you look at in Q1, on the other side, the retail and rural uh, remain steady. Retail loyalty programs, which we had started about a year back uh, for the top retailers in R1, continue to do well, and now we have reached about 12,000 outlets in Q1. This initiative, along with increasing retail outlets, will remain a focus area for the company in the coming period, as it has been for the last two years. The company has undertaken an RTM revamp plan, Project R1, with a leading strategy consultant. This project aims to enhance distribution, particularly high, high potential towns and villages, while optimizing representation in uh, lower potential towns. The project will help to expand our reach across India, as well as improve servicing in high potential outlets, strengthen the distribution through the right channel partners and effective channel program management. The project is expected to deliver about 1.4x improvement in outlet reach in retail, Retail R1, which increased street on street of UC, and a targeted expansion about 1.1 to 1.2x in high potential villages in the area. The project has already been launched recently and is currently being piloted in two of our key states. The project, after a five month uh, pilot, will be taken up, uh, taken across the country based on the recommendations that we see and the ones, uh, the initiatives that we see are working for this organization. <coughs> The company has also undertaken geotagging and geofencing for all our direct coverage outlets. This initiative includes geotagging of direct uh, stores to enhance sales for efficiency and more importantly to optimize cost to sales. 
All these initiatives are expected to enhance both our execution efficiency and value chain growth going forward in general. The organized trade business continued to deliver a strong first performance, registering a growth of 12% year on year and 15% quarter on quarter. The saliency of organized trade, including canteen and institutions, uh, stood at 26% for the quarter. Modern trade B2C business grew by 9% year on year, supported by growth in independent chains across the regions. The B2B business in modern trade grew by 56% aided by opening of uh, 150 stores under Metro Fashion Carrier. E-commerce B2C registered a growth of 27% year on year. NPDs continue to scale up well in e-commerce, channel led by Almond Drops, hair and skin care range, as well as 100% of coconut. Quick commerce channels like Instamart, Zepto, and Blinkit grew by 83% in, uh, in the year. And this is something that would remain a focus area for the company going forward in the uh, future, next few quarters. The international business registered a growth of 28% quarter on quarter, while on a year on year basis growth was modest on a high day. Last year, C1 saliency to full year just for year reference was close to about 30%. And we expect in quarter two itself the growth to come back uh, very strongly, being on a softer base. And by the end of the year, the growth in international would be a good strong double digit. The rest of uh, uh, world exports grew by 43% Y on Y, as well as 55% C1 2. Uh, with uh, key markets such as Malaysia, USA, and Canada performing well. Nepal registered a growth of 76% year on year, 20% Q1Q, driven by outlet expansion and infrastructure improvement. Middle East and Africa continue to perform well, registered 45% growth Q1Q. UAE and lower Gulf is scaling up well, supported by consumer and retail activations. Key accounts combined with distribution expansion to 100 plus stores in UAE. Business in Qatar and Kuwait has also stabilized with new partners and are showing good traction. In Q1, we completed our transition from national distribution to own distribution, from, uh, from a uh, national outside distribution to our own distribution in Bangladesh, with completion of distributors across all 64 districts in the country. ADHO consumer promotion was supported by digital print campaigns and digital visibility. ADHO consumer research was also initiated to develop effective positioning and brand communication for ADHO, ADHO ATL, and digital campaigns. We will continue to monitor the current situation in Bangladesh, which at this moment remains volatile. For the company, though, this will not have any material impact in the near to midterm, as presently the contribution of Bangladesh to overall console business is only about 1%. ADHO performance during the quarter was affected once again by the planned hygiene correction in general trade. However, sequentially, the brand still registered modest growth. Impact was primarily in sachet and to an extent in milk packs, which were affected in the wholesale correction, as detailed earlier. The large packs continued to perform well with close to double digit growth on a four year CAGR basis. The expansion of the 190 ml PET bottle, which we had converted from glass to PET, so which is seeing extremely good traction, the 700 pack. ML pack, which has been introduced in general trade, as well as OT specific packs of 650 and 750, all of them are continuing to drive performance. So the main decline that had happened is basically in sashes, where really speaking, there is no effective contribution, so wholesale stocks have gone down a bit in the milk packs, which we expect to recover in the second quarter. During the quarter, digital media initiatives for ADHO to build, reach, and tap TV dark markets through YouTube and OTT talk shows resulted in average increment reach of 10% with 1.79 crores views and 89% view through views. Social media efforts, including deployment of 84 Amazon affiliate influencers, KOL, and micro influencers, coupled with trending content, led to improvement in engagement rate of 2.2%, which surpassed the hair oil benchmark of about 1.7% for organic sports. The amount of hair and skincare range registered a substantial growth of 77% year on year and 86% quarter on quarter in Q1 FY25, and it is scaling up well. The portfolio saw, saw the launch of its seventh product, Almond Drop Ultra Light Body Lotion for summer in April 2024 with key ingredients aloe vera, almond drop oil, and vitamin E. This product has been listed in all major e commerce platforms like Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, and independent retailers. The launch was implemented through on platform and off platform activity, affiliate, affiliate influencer programs, and self. Almond drop shampoo and condition witnessed increased uh, increase of stake supported by meta targeting on social media, which garnered 1.6 million views, along with FACs and 
multi brand and cap visibility we have clearly seen that almond drop shampoo is showing good traction being a hair hair care brand from the almond drop uh, portfolio one of the uh, one of the very good tractions that we are getting and we clearly see a potential for that to be slowly launched in the later half of the year in the general trade channel as well almond drop serum sachet was launched in markets of west bengal and odisha in general trade with 100% gt in success influencer campaign to drive conversions and build awareness was conducted and promoted promoter led drives were held at 40 plus modern trade stores initial responses are encouraging with good uptake positive from the consumer ratings and reviews and showed good traction of the brand in the e-commerce as well common drop soap saw robust uptake in modern trade and e-commerce channel with focus on various bundle packs offering based on retailers we remain committed on building the brand awareness with search and display <laughs> So yeah, 100% pure coconut oil continues to scale up well with double de- strong double digit growth with consistent gain in market share in tra- traditional bazaars strong with states market share has also seen improvement in maharashtra driven by media initiatives and distribution drive the brand was supported by tv media and campaigns on ott during the quarter which led to an sob of 40% in coconut oil category in maharashtra on ground activities such as deployment of camper van engagements with 5000 plus retailers resulted in significant increase in participation and distribution as well as consumer connect digital media initiatives including fully functional social media page for bazaar 100% pure coconut oil and campaign on amazon and prepio resulted in 3 crore views and a ctr of 0.86% with incremental reach of 20% as the brand is scaling up and gaining an acceptance we have taken two price increases in june and july to offset interest issues in copra prices During the quarter, Bajaj Gulab Jal performed well in general trade after its sales launch in Q3 and Q4 of last fiscal. The brand further expanded its presence through the B2B platforms such as Walmart, Nike, and Big Basket, as well as independent stores across various regions. Presence of the brand is changing to product banners and PRs, and this will also be one of our focus brands going forward. We have made significant progress in our portfolio diversification with the non. Uh, ADSO portfolio, as I just mentioned, and now it contributes to 18% of our uh, total contribution in C1 FI25, and it's growing by 17% on a year-on-year basis. For the quarter, the ALP spend stood at 37.2 crores, about 16% of sales. We are committed to investing, investing in ADSO as well as our new brands with a strong focus on digital media to effectively cater evolving consumer preferences. As far as raw materials are concerned, in Q1 the price of uh, LLP remained stable compared to the previous quarter, owing to steady crude oil and base oil prices in Asia. On the other hand, the uh, prices of refined mustard oil saw a slight increase, driven by uh, driven by higher purchases by NAFE, which is basically the natural uh, national agricultural cooperative uh, marketing federation of India. Uh, around the election period, despite a good crop, however, the global edible oil market has largely remained stable, and hence we do not expect much price uh, fluctuations going forward. The company continues its cost-saving uh, and efficiency improvement initiatives, various measures such as optimizing space, developing alternate vendors using alternate packing materials, led to cost saving of nearly 1.5 crores in the quarter. Additionally, smart manufacturing and automation efforts boosted productivity by 6% in Guwahati and 12% in Ponta compared to Q1 of FI23. FI23, sorry, FI24. The company remains dedicated to ESG by optimizing resources, leading to reduction in water and energy consumption at both plants. The company is also taking initiatives to uh, become water positive in line with the stated ESG target. These efforts highlight the company's commitment to sustainable practices and growth standards. The fiscal year is expected to see improved perform- uh, performance driven by revival in volume and uh, volume growth in rural markets, aided by increased budgetary allocation for rural development and uh, a favorable monsoon. Urban market demand is expected to remain relatively stable. Deeper market penetration through various channels combined with focus on product premiumization will further support demand. Inflation expected to remain soft on the back of benign commodity prices. These factors augur well for the overall demand conditions. The planned hygiene correction in general trade along with the implementation project Aran will have a positive effect on our general trade business going forward. 
with organized trade and international business continue to scale up as per plans our strategic ob objectives of broad basing of channels and geographies are well on track our diversification journey continues well with scaling up of products under the bajaj brands in hair oils and excellent growth and planned expansion in almond drop hair and skin care range with the above initiatives we are confident of achieving sustainable and consistent top line growth as we have stated earlier with this i end the opening remarks and open the session for questions thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two <coughs> Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rishi Kothari from Pi Square Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first goes for the I recently read your annual report for a certain store, and you guys just mentioned that. we as a company want to diversify from adh to brand to non adh thing so and the portfolio we are expansion we are looking at 30 40% out of it so what's the current risk of adh and, and between adh and non adh uh, product split in terms of revenue so i covered that in my opening remarks the uh, the number was about uh, four years back about 5% adh was 95% 5% was non adh by the end of last year full year the number had gone up to 17% the number has now moved up to 18% we are little higher than 18% and we are well on track to reach that 40% number that we are talking about in the la in the next next few years okay and also uh, two three years down the line what are what are the top line numbers in terms of growth are we expecting for the company in terms of the product as well as the as we are now diversifying the different different product lines apart from adh so what are the top line expectations do we have for the company so overall if you look at uh, we are clearly looking at even ending this year at a, with a mid to high single digit uh, growth rate so we will be striving for going closer to the double digit growth rate but clearly mid to single digit growth rates clearly look is what we are uh, targeting for the entire year uh, which q2 being uh, obviously a little higher than that uh the planned correction we deliberately uh, embarked on this planned correction because we are also doing this project aruhan which is a complete uh, revamp of our uh, uh, go to uh, our rupu market strategy as far as generic trade is concerned because we are looking at both revamping our urban where we want to increase our outlets by about 40% is the number that is coming to which is with implementation of fit on street from the existing number that we have we want to take it up Uh, and that is the kind of scope that works we have done a detailed study of uh, markets which have high a uh, high consumption where we have opportunities where our sale is not high and those markets we are uh, now uh, piloting in two of our key markets and that is something that we will take up so given that we wanted to ensure that a hygiene is corrected so that at least when the projects are implemented we should not get pulled back because of our hygiene factors in the marketplace there are lot of disturbances not only in our company but across uh, most companies because everybody trying to push sales we see wholesale rates are quite disturbed we wanted to correct it get our hygiene correction we knew that it will have an impact in this particular quarter but we wanted to correct it because for the long term we wanted a far more hygienically stronger organization with implement when we plan to implement all these changes so so mid to single digit is what we are looking at and we our stated objective for the long term would be a sustained cagr of close to double digit yeah that by okay, that by two factors that by two factors both the new products that we are looking at as well as in terms of the international market basically the channel by the expectations okay channel and okay okay uh, thanks for the explanation and uh, in terms of the margin expansion are we looking at any margin expansion because as we are growing in terms of the uh, revenue targets that we have uh, for the adh and non adh brands so any margin expansion that we expect from the brands uh, in the market so most of the products that we are launching under the almond drop extensions uh, that is both the hair and skin care range 
most of them will have close to ADHO kind of uh, margin. Some of them may be a little lower, but clearly uh, very, very strong, good margins, which can be sustained uh, over a period of time. Initially, we might be advertising for some of these brands, so, so there would be a little bit of a depletion, but overall we'll manage the, the data uh, directionally that we have taken between 16 to 80%, we'll maintain within that. So our launches of these products in general trade will be in a phased manner, but we are very, very clear some of these products, which are large category products, have good potential for us, are showing good traction because of the almond drops franchise, and we clearly see the potential for us to take, scale them up uh, quite well as far as the general trade is concerned, which is where basically size and money is. And uh, one of the first launches of one of the large category almond drop extensions will be by the end of either Q3 or Q4, and we will take it. Okay, and uh, also we uh, will be a debt free company eventually as the whatever the plan, expansion planning that we are uh, having for the company. So we will be have a debt free company as a whole. So, as of now, as you are aware, we are obviously not leveraged. That's why we went for a, a buyback so that we could basically give a higher return on capital to our uh, return on capital and on equity. But if you look at uh, one of the other objectives, which is obviously not being stated because, uh, I mean, we don't have anything concrete at this stage. We are obviously working with uh, uh, some of our consultants on the, on the acquisition front. Unlike larger companies, we will not take on anything that we can grab. We are very, very specific as to where we are looking at. We are actively looking at the strategy team is continuously working on that. We are closely following some targets, and if it fits into our long-term goal, both in terms of this thing, we may or may not... Uh, 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 may or may not, depending on the size of the pie, we may or may not look at uh, uh, leveraging ourselves. But in case we need to leverage, uh, we will leverage if the overall match comes out in our case. Okay, okay. okay. And any preset uh, plan that we have for the year FI25? Any uh, number in mind? Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you come again? Sorry, uh, any KPEX plan that we have for FI25? So as far as CAPEX is concerned, we are not really uh, looking at uh, increasing our manufacturing facility with any significant uh, investment in uh, capacity uh, building. So as and when the brands scale up, some of the brands which are outside very early, as and when they scale up, we might look at facility, but that's a little far away. At this moment, it will still be under third party control by us, but that is a third party manufacturing for the other ranges. Air oils at this stage, we are not looking at capacity in a large way because capacity-wise we are well covered. It is more in terms of investments that are happening in terms of automation, in terms of ESG, and those, those do not require money. The way we are going about it, those don't require significant uh, numbers which will move the balance sheet too much. Okay, great. Uh, I'm done with our questions. I'll join the queue. Thank you so much for the response. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Kaushik Podar from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please go ahead. <coughs> See, aside from this wholesale correction, what was the volume growth at the retail level? Do you have any data? So retail level, we are just about positive. Uh, so retail level also just about positive, positive and rural. So between retail and rural, just if you look at general trade, they were both uh, catching positive on the uh, on the quarter, while on the year, uh, on the Q1, Q, it was, I mean, it is actually just flat uh, on the uh, Q, uh, Y on Y and Q1, Q with a marginal growth. But if that be the case, how can you approach that? Last time, if I remember correctly, in the last um, uh, analyst con call, you had talked about a double-digit growth. I mean, uh, is there something different that has happened since the time you gave that uh, statement? No. If you look at, if you if you were to just break down our four quarter numbers, and you will see that our quarter one last year, and that's why you see our PAGR is still very very high. You know? Three-year CAGR, four-year CAGR, Q1, even with this declining sales, is pretty high. Because last year, Q1, if you look at, the number was extremely high. After that, it had actually tapered on Q2, Q3, Q4. So, so if you just crunch those numbers, you will see, uh, when I just bring back the wholesale numbers back, you will see the uh, numbers to, let's say, a 6-7% growth seems to be 
pretty doable. We would be targeting a little higher. Six seven percent. You're talking of value growth or volume growth? Value growth. Our numbers are all in value growth. Volume will typically be a little higher because anything that goes beyond the GDH or a pricing, this thing of a uh, of the lower than GDH in terms of per unit. So the volume growth will be. Uh, This is higher, but in our case, the volume growth really is not that significant because unless you have a category which is just uh, pure uh, pure that product, in, I mean, if it is only area to that I'm saying, then volume growth does make any relevance. But when I'm comparing a portfolio which is completely different, uh, volume growth would not really make sense. I mean, if my coconut were to grow much faster, the volume growth will be much higher. So really speaking, uh, mentioning that will not be useful. So we monitor it more from our value. And how is Q uh, Q Commerce shares uh, scaling up? As I said, it had gone up by about 85% this year, 83% to 85%. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, that is a clear focus for us. Two reasons. One is obviously uh, we see that uh, I mean, you know, market cap coming into it, so all of them are um, I mean clearly getting traction, not only in tier one towns but even lower. So our focus in the last two three months. Has, On far higher, and it will continue to go far, um, to stronger into that. While our category is not uh, not in such category, so a mass or neither food, so it may not have huge numbers. But we want to maximize uh, our presence, so, uh, presence there, and try and get. In terms of our assortment, I think we are pretty well structured in uh, most of in some of the top linkage, and now the uh, third minute comes up even there. So already uh, we have got that. Uh, I think we want to scale it up really aggressively uh, there. I mean, clear focus for us is that. The other fact also remains that these are more profitable channels, right? Within e-commerce, profitable, uh, let's say, retailers within e-commerce or over the larger players. So obviously, our interest will also be to focus strongly on these. Now, is the is the margin higher in e-commerce? You are saying? Over over other e-commerce, over the other um, larger retail. Uh, retailers in e-commerce. Yes. Okay, and uh, my last question: What is the uh, what is the share of your sales from e-commerce? You said our sales of e-commerce in uh, overall, if you look at it, is about uh, 26 percent from modern trade. E-commerce is about 10 percent. Uh, modern trade is about 11, and about 5 percent comes from CPC, CPC, and all that. So 26. Now, uh, yeah, modern retail is 20 percent. You said, right? Uh, modern trade is about eleven percent, ten percent is e-commerce, and five percent is CPC, CPC. So all put together, about twenty-six percent is what we call the organized trade, and joint trade is considered the balance. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. The next question is on the line of Nikhil Upadhyay from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening. I hope I am audible. Yes, yeah. Yeah, sir. So just uh, one question. Uh, coming back to this, uh, uh, the inventory readjustment or the readjustment at the GT level. If you can just help me understand a little bit better, because so where I'm coming from is that if I uh, map our GT sales uh, from 22 onwards to 24, we were in the range of 180, 190. For last three quarters. Uh, our reported numbers were in the range of 170. So, oh, last like nine months, we were already looking at a drop in sales at the GT level. So, on the inventory side, I think the channel was already not performing. So, uh, parallelly, there couldn't be having a very high inventory at the GT level. So, what is this change we have brought in? No, so. So overall, if you look at yes, if you are asking whether GT has remained subdued overall, I think for most companies GT has remained subdued as it is for us as well. So GT has remained subdued. On the other side, the correction that has been done is basically in terms of the our structuring of how we had had our wholesale shares. We were actually giving a higher schemes to the larger wholesalers. So the stocking was happening mostly at the larger wholesalers where the lower end was falling off. So there were market instability. I mean that is as you go to the market, you see that is there for quite a few companies. I'll obviously not say all companies, but many companies had this issue because it's much easier to sell to the uh, larger wholesalers and get uh, quick sales. So that we wanted to correct over a structural correction. 
which is what we embarked in May or end of April, May, and then uh, continue with that. Now it is uh, now it is stabilizing. It takes about typically two three months to stabilize that. So the difference that has gone up between the smaller slab wholesalers to the larger wholesalers is about three three and a half percent, which typically ideally. You know, good ideal condition should be between one to one point five percent. You still have to you know, incentivize the larger wholesalers more, but beyond a certain point, then you will have the dynamics itself will change. They will become the distributors as well. So that dynamics has got corrected. Now we have got that difference between the larger wholesalers to the smaller ones uh, uh, reduce that. And as a result, what has happened? The holding that the larger wholesalers were doing, they depleted their stock, and they are now operating. Now, wholesale really doesn't impact consumer offtake. So, so the consumer offtake is going on. So, wholesaler stock has depleted, and now they are purchasing as much they want because they are not getting that large advantage, which is it suits us well because over time that number gets neutralized, and they will have to keep servicing whatever is required. We really don't want the wholesaler to pay a lot of stock. So, so that's what we are. Okay, and just a continuation of uh, and. Uh, I just, if you can just help me understand, because see, we were looking at this issue on the JT side for almost um, last full 24. So, uh, why didn't we brought this change in the previous year itself? Because the channel was not performing, and this dynamics would have been through last year as well. So, uh, I, I I'm just trying to understand that, uh, like, was this in process from like? almost six months and the effect has come out significantly in this quarter or? No, no. So typically what happens is, this, this you will see is a cyclical phenomena which happens every three, four years, gets actuated typically when the demand conditions are poorer. As I said, this is, a, if you were to go to the market, you will see quite a few companies have this real wholesale instability in rate. This typically happens when the, the wholesalers need to offload their stock and are willing to operate at a much thinner margin, maybe at some time for a marginally negative margin, just to ensure that the rotation of inventory, etc., goes on. So this is exactly what has happened. I mean, uh, it's not a planned thing that we wanted to support the larger wholesalers or ensure that they become the meaning sub distributors, etc. It's a question of when the market is cured, holding off inventory will happen at some point of time. You'll have to take the correction. So we are taking the correction. I think. Uh, when uh, it started about in 2021, and this is uh, so cyclical corrections do keep happening. They are correction, and I am assuming that for the next three, four years, we'll not uh, uh, require to do these corrections. And if the market remains violent or the market becomes violent, anyway, these corrections will happen because then the rotation of the inventory will be in unit. Okay. And uh, see, what we are also uh, hearing, and this is a common theme across FMCG or smaller durable companies, is that the rural uh, growth is uh, recovering. So, and uh, with GT being higher on the GT channel being prominent for us, if we have to understand uh, how are things moving now, month on month, like are they, are these, uh, Post this uh, correction at those large wholesalers, are you seeing volume growth being coming from them year on year, or just some sense on? Yeah, sure. So clearly, rural that we had seen earlier, uh, which was really struggling and was a laggard, clearly is uh, turned around. I mean, rural is still performing better even for us, uh, as far as uh, between the channel systems. The other thing that we have also identified is in terms of rural, there is a clear opportunity for us to expand into villages where there are unrepresentation as far as we are concerned. So while we are well distributed as a company, we just about cover about 66 or 1,000 villages. And uh, when we were doing this project, even earlier identified, and now when we are doing this uh, project uh, a little more, uh, let's say, analytical. We are seeing clear opportunity for us to have a 1.1 to 1.2x growth as far as the existing villages are concerned. So, so we are just mapping our cost to sales as well as the number of expansion that we require to do. Clearly, we see an opportunity for six to 10,000 villages getting added, and this is obviously at the country level, not at the pilot project. So, this pilot is happening on that, and we are finalizing the model. So. One is obviously the markets are improving. We are seeing traction in these markets. The other is our own internal uh, 
uh, effort that we are going to push as far as rural representation is concerned as far as, uh, in terms of the number of villages that we want to get. So clearly these two things we feel will uh, aid to our growth back in uh, rural areas. Okay, and just last question. Uh, last year, see, uh, one of the parameters which we said, uh, the, if we look at the health of ADHO as a brand, the larger packs were growing better and the smaller SKUs were not growing, the smaller LUPs. Uh, if you have to see the trend sequentially and not from Q4 to Q1, but over the last four, five quarters, if we plot the trend and you would have it, are you seeing that changing for the lower LUPs or are they still degrowing and most of the growth is only coming in the larger SKUs? How is it split between the two? So, so uh, good questions, and uh, I'll just uh, speak to you a little. Uh, as far as uh, the larger packs are concerned, you are absolutely right. They are growing. That's where mostly the competition. We see, uh, like one competitor at an extremely discounted price, as far as amount is concerned, going at about 20, 30 percent lower than us. Uh, yes, do making some dents in modern trades, etc. But I don't see them making the dent as far as junk trade, which is our core uh, function, which. Uh, the food strategy and well is one category where the market has actually reduced a bit, which is the uh, uh, sachet pack. In fact, after COVID, there has been decline. We have erected a bit of it, but that's the natural movement in the marketplace. As far as the smaller packs are concerned, the 2020 rupee pack, uh, I mean, as a company, we have always remained in, in, in the 1020 rupee pack, and 1020 rupee pack in the last two, three, four years have been gaining salience. I mentioned to you that last time that in the 10 rupee pack, there are interventions that are happening. There are interventions in terms of packing, etc. I don't want to talk of it because the launch will happen sometime in Q3. And when we launch it, we'll exactly say what intervention. Uh, uh, one of the interventions is to ensure that in terms of perception, perception to the consumer as well as in terms of quantity, it is able to play with the other 10 UV pack which are there in the marketplace today we are both perception wise as well as in terms of like actual quantity etc we are far lower than that of the other cheaper brands and hence getting real. so we are looking at how to maintain our so the work that has happened been happening for the last maybe seven eight months or actually a little more than that to ensure how our gross margins are protected and yet we are able to do that so I, I get back to that exact what work we have done, et cetera. Before the launch, I don't want to talk about it. That should seem Q3, and we can hope that in the in that uh, release part, we will have a good number coming up, because that's the intervention that is happening. In mid tax we have done some uh, price interventions, because in terms of the price, our prices have gone up. Uh, I have already presented that earlier. We have had good... Uh, I will not say good fantastic growth or something, but our decline that we were seeing earlier has got arrested, and this is something that we will continue to push forward as far as the business is concerned. The DHA model is, I think we are well covered on. Yes, we will not react to uh, very, very low prices that are being offered in the marketplace, but I do not see too much of the impact that is going to have. So, uh, yeah, so. Sure, I'll come back in the queue. Thanks, for you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Rolin Nandu from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. A uh, few questions from my end. Uh, first is this uh, one-time correction that you have taken in the wholesale channel. Uh, is it fair to assume that from July onwards, uh, things are back to normal in terms of sales uh, momentum, what we have seen in Q4 before this intervention has taken place? Uh, and are there any such correction in terms of either product or channel which can, you know, in a way have a temporary disrupt disruption of a quarter or two going forward? And if I were to probably, you know, uh, look at your numbers, I mean, you, your guidance of, you know, a high single digit kind of a growth for entire year, uh, for the remainder of the quarter, uh, three quarters, a double digit value growth is possible. So, yeah, I mean, those, that's my first question. 
So, so let me answer that uh, question right here. First and foremost, this was the only correction that was in research. There is no other corrections that are corrections or interventions or any negative uh, um, adverse any uh, action that will be taken uh, which will impact the, uh, impact the market. So this was in our mind not very adverse in terms of, yes, adverse in terms of these numbers, but not adverse in terms of basic market practices. Uh, that has uh, got developed and we had to correct it. And as I said, it was not only our company. Uh, we have seen this happen for many other companies. We wanted ours to become much more healthier. Uh, to your question was, uh, part two was whether we see that uh, correction impacting and whether it is coming beneficial. As I, as I mentioned, we have seen more and more wholesalers, 800 numbers, as I said, I called the numbers straight away out for you. 13% of our wholesale base extra numbers over Q4 we can see has added back in Q1. That direction is uh, going to continue. The larger wholesalers are still under uh, wait and watch. More than wait and watch, they are now not holding stocks, which is okay for us. So really speaking, numbers will not get too impacted if they do not hold. And we really don't want to hold them up again and, and go back to the earlier part. So this is where it is. Uh, as far as uh, uh, sales growth are concerned, as you rightly pointed out, two to Q4, it has to have a strong growth rate. I don't want to get into numbers, but we feel that these corrections that we have done, the project that we have undertaken in GT, the way modern trade and e-commerce is building our focus also uh, stronger and quick one. The way our new products are scaling up. I mean, uh, earlier we would only talk of mainly the coconut of beta formula, etc. Now we are seeing a whole range of almond drop extensions coming up. We are compliant to some of the other products. Also, taking some of these products into general trade. So I think we are very confident that we will be hitting the numbers that we have been talking about. Thank you for that uh, elaborate answer, sir. My second question is on margin. Uh, now you are, I mean, if you, if I'm not wrong, uh, over the, I mean, near term or medium term, you're guiding for a 16 to 18 percent kind of an EBITDA margin. Uh, now, if I look at the history of Bajaj Corp, right, from FY13 to FY21, on an average, our gross margins were in the range of 66 to 67 percent. Our EBITDA margin was upward of 24, 25 percent. Uh, so, uh, is, are these numbers uh, too hard to look at in the, you know, next three to five years? Uh, does this numbers require, you know, some kind of a very drastic correction in raw material, or uh, the competitive intensity uh, in the current market is such that it's very difficult to, you know? So I think I think you have answered uh, most of the thing in your question itself. So competitive intensity is something that we will have to keep a watch out on. So we see one of the competitors being extremely aggressive. Not all of the competitors, but one of them. So it's obviously we will have to cognizant, be cognizant of that. Uh, I mean, they operate at a net margin which is uh, far lower than uh, most of the others. But uh, I think that is that if that is the norm today, we will have to live with that and play counter to it. Still corrections happen. Uh, obviously, the other thing is, uh, given that the uh, market has been subdued over time, I think that's how most of these things, companies are reacting, uh, some of them more like that. So going back to that 23-25% uh, EBITDA margin in the short term seems uh, unlikely, also because at that point of time, we were a very low cost to serve single product company uh, mainly single product company. Low cost to serve, I say this, because it was more a wholesale driven company with patterning of retail, uh, uh, retail contribution, etc. Now that you are looking at retailing as a big activity, which is also required because you would want to push your new product range, etc. I mean, your entire structuring of the company is to make it more diversified, more stronger in terms of not being only in GT, only in wholesale, and only in ADHO. So that, in that exercise, we have come a lot. At this moment, the investments are happening, so numbers, some of the numbers are coming in, but the large numbers, as we see, as quarters go by, we are getting more and more confidence of more and more products succeeding. These investments will continue, so we would like that 16 to 18% to continue for some time, where the scale builds up, and then we look at improving the margin. If we look at improving the margin beyond 20 or wherever there, uh, at this moment itself, I think the investment funnel will have to go down, both the product investment as well as in terms of the retailing, etc., all the other investments that, that is not something that we want to do. It might look 
good in the short term, but on the long term, the company gets impacted, and that is not what we want. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. And last question, uh, Jaydeep sir, to you would be. Uh, you know, uh, if uh, if you you joined sometime in July of 2020, uh, you have completed four years at the helm of this company. Uh, what would be some of your you know a uh, few hits and misses in your tenure, and what would be your priority right for the next three to four years, right? So that's it from my side. Thank you so much for taking my question. So let's start with the miss itself. The miss straight away is that apply numbers. I don't think there is any question denying that uh, as a as a miss, what would be the first miss to point out is clearly the top line, um, bottom line number. Uh, the top line number. Uh, bottom line wise, I'm really not concerned because this is the bottom line you would have to come to anyway if you want to prove that. So on the positive side, if you are to talk of the hits, etc., I think as an organization we are far stronger today. Maybe the numbers do not reflect immediately, but yes, in terms of process, system, people. Uh, all that is geared uh, for success. We are building the company. We are building brands. We are building channels. We are building the international business. I think all of them are in a build mode, and these are not the theoretical statuses. These are all things which are already starting to bear fruit and so on. So at this moment, I would personally think these are clear positives in terms of people, in terms of process, in terms of automation systems, etc. We are making this far stronger company, a company which can rub shoulders with the good companies in this industry. Sure, sir. So, and just, I mean, would top line be your number one priority going ahead since it, you have highlighted that as one of your misses or you know if you can just give us some uh, you know some more uh, priorities in your let's next go, let's, let's let's take us back in that as you as you said so let me take you back to the last four years at that point of time it was the building this organization so this process building etc etc i think most of that has already been built if you ask me today we'll uh, building processes, systems, people, etc., will still be a priority. I'll say no. There, I mean, maintaining it is my priority, but building it is. I will not be sitting now. It's business as usual, as far as those aspects are concerned. Building a portfolio of brands, supporting them, getting them into looking at how we look at innovation, funnel, etc. I think that has also uh, come in place, and now it's time that we start looking in some of these benefits. Uh, have we seen overall top line numbers go move really well? The answer is no, but have you seen in, in specific strategic pillars the top line numbers moving? I say, oh, it's a resounding yes, whether it be new product, international channels, etc., etc. Clearly, yes. And I think the work that we are now doing in GT as we improve that, I think as a company, so these top line numbers will also start moving. Great, sir. Thank you so much for answering those questions and all the very best, sir, going ahead. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may I please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Harish Shah from Rira Holdings. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so we've only recently started tracking uh, Bajaj consumers. Apologies if uh, I'm being repetitive with any question. Uh, so coming back to this channel correction, which we did. So in Q4, we had a distributed stock correction uh, to the tune of around 12, 13 crore. And then this quarter, we have uh, what we call it a hygiene correction at the wholesaler. And so just wanted to understand the difference between these two. I mean, is it a continuous activity that we are doing or uh, there's something starkly different about both these corrections? And at the same time, so is this correction induced by the channel partners? I mean, were they the one who came to you and complained about having high inventory, or is this something that was initiated from your end? No, so, so both are initiated from our end. The two are completely different. The two the correction is basically the difference between the primary and secondary. Basically, we wanted to ensure that distributor overall stocks go down, so primary billing was different. This now we are talking about is the distributor wholesaler and wholesaler stocking because the wholesaler stocks have gone up. So finally, distributor is servicing the wholesalers. We wanted to ensure with the wholesalers, and it was not so much of stocking that we wanted to address. I mean, stocking, we knew that stocking will get addressed, but stocking was not uh, the primary purpose. The primary purpose was to ensure the rate stability that has come up in the marketplace with the larger wholesalers was so money. Hogging the marketplace with lower prices than what the smaller wholesalers were buying from the company. 
that we wanted to correct so that the smaller wholesalers also participate with us and we have a larger base of uh, wholesalers to operate. Otherwise, you would be getting more and more squeezed by the top wholesalers. And as I as I speak, you can go to the market and see there are companies where that is, and large companies where that is an issue today, much worse than us. And the correction would require what I just did, and that, that's a call somebody will have to take. So this exists today, and I do not want to comment about how different companies should operate, but we felt as an organization that this hygiene correction needs to be corrected now so that going forward, all those IPM that we are wanting to implement across the uh, country, so we are in a situation where this does not bring it down. I mean, we wanted to be in a much cleaner, more hygienically stronger situation with the time. So, so this is what has been done. So this is the wholesaler part of it. That was more correction of primary. Okay, now, okay, that makes it much more clear to understand. And the uh, second question is on the edge spend. Now, if, if I look at last 10 years uh, data, we have uh, cumulative spent nearly 1400, uh, 1450 crore uh, rupees in edge spend. But at the same time, if we look at the top line growth, it, it, it hasn't, uh, it, it doesn't uh, actually reflect the kind of spend that we have done on advertisement and marketing. So, I mean, any uh, brainstorming on that part as to how we can, you know, increase the efficiency of this spend because 16, 18 percent is, is, is a high number as a percentage of sales and we have been doing this, doing this, doing it for almost 10, 12 years. So at some point you you expect that this number to taper down because a lot of margin is getting stuck. Because on one side, uh, we are not able to improve the cross margin because of the competition. And then on the second side, we have this uh, real sticky expense at, at a, uh, which is taking away a lot of money. So any thought process on how we can improve the efficiency of this span and actually how, how, how can it contribute to the top line? It is a construct of the market. It is not so much the efficiency. If you look at this particular brand, which is a premium brand with a higher gross margin, typically the way you measure your uh, advertising uh, spend is basically in terms of how much are you spending compared to, it's always a related spend, right? So compared to the market, how much are you spending versus what is your share? So we call it a share of voice which is basically how much you have advertised, that's a share of market, which is your market share. So typically for a premium brand like ours, we operate at a 1.4 to 1.5 uh, times uh, SOV to SOM, which means if you have a market share like this, for about 10%, then you should uh, do about 14 to 15% of the total overall spend as far as the marketing is concerned. Because that is what is required to ensure that you can demand that premium pricing that you have with that broad market of 55% or so that you are commanding. So this is this is nothing to do with efficiency of the brand. And if this, the issue that you have is, uh, over the last 10 years as we are talking about, or over the last at least, definitely the last eight, nine years, is basically the hair oil category itself has not grown much. So this efficiency that you are talking about would have, in, uh, would have got uh, translated into numbers if your hair oil category would have, uh, let's say, grown by high single digit percent which has not happened, and hence ADH has retained this market share position, but it has not been able to grow much, unlike none of the others that grow either, but this is what is happening. So really speaking, it's a construct of the product which requires this kind of investment. Now where we are going to, now why the investments are going up is because you need to advertise, because we have only advertised in ADH and nothing else. So we have built only ADH and nothing else. We need to change that as a company. We need to diversify our portfolio to become a stronger organization, which is the journey that we started three, four years back. And now it is starting to traction, not this quarter, for quarter after quarter. And this is something that we will continue to do. That will require investment because these also become the ADHs of the future. So uh, going ahead, uh, if, uh, if, since we're expecting maybe um, uh, a high single digit kind of a growth for the next three, four, five years. So uh, how do we look at the edge spend? Will it remain seen on absolute, uh, in absolute basis? Or do we plan to keep it same in terms of percentage of sales? We are spending close to 160, 165 crores. So will this absolute amount will be maintained or do we keep, will we keep on increasing as our revenue also goes up?
Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the management. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so any further uh, clarification, Harsh? Yeah, actually, I had one question on the ad spend. I think the line was disconnected. Uh, so my question was going ahead. Do we, do we plan to keep the ad spend at 160-165 crore? that we spent in FY24 or uh, do we plan to increase the budget as the top line goes up? I mean, do we, do we plan to keep it at 16 to 18 percent of sales going ahead as well? Or in absolute terms, we, are, we will keep, keep our budget same? That is what I answered, is what I answered earlier. Uh, if, we were to, uh, if we were to take it even further, more aggressively, I might have increased the ad spend further and in this way and taken up more brands as far as GT is concerned going forward. But we would like to be a little more prudent. We will operate at the 16 to 18 percent ad spend and keep introducing as the business scales up. We will keep introducing uh, products in GT, one or two large products in GT which we can develop and make it larger. So, so that is exactly how we are going about. One of the launches will happen in two, three weeks of this year and this is what we will continue. 16 to 18 is what we will keep the number of. Okay, okay, sure, understood. Thank you so much. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Uh, uh, thank you so much and thank you for participating in this call. Uh, as, as you have seen uh, in the last quarter, we have taken quite a few hygiene corrections because as an organization, having done so many, uh, so many initiatives, uh, both as well as, well as, as you can see in, in trade as well, as well as in terms of new product introductions, modern trade impact. We wanted to be in a position where we can actually uh, take advantage of all these initiatives and have a strong organization with good, strong, consistent growth going forward. So this one-time correction had to be taken. We took it this quarter. Any quarter we have taken, we would have taken this quarter. So we are taking this correction and going forward, we we intend to deliver the numbers that we have been talking about based on the strategy we are taking. So thank you for participating and the uh, support and strong uh, weekend. Good weekend for you. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.